Uh, correspondence at Kermanamayo.com. So Bo is afraid. We've already spoken to Ariaster. Uh, Ariaster, indeed. Ariaster. So this is uh, the new feature from the writer-director of Hereditary, Her Head is a Tree, which he hadn't heard before. He sort of chuckled. Sort of. I still think that's funny. And Mitoma. Um, it is a sprawlingly picaresque uh, third feature, which he described as an anxiety comedy, an odyssey of sorts, an elaborate Jewish joke. He talked about it being inspired by Greek plays and Kafkaesque paranoia, which is, you know, I think pretty much uh, true. It has its roots in a short film from uh, 2011, which was on the internet, now appears to have disappeared from the internet, in which essentially somebody attempting to leave their apartment leaves their key and their suitcase, <clears throat> and then the key disappears, and then they can't leave the apartment, and then a whole bunch of bad stuff happens. That is sort of the initial setup of Bo is Afraid, in which uh, Joaquin Phoenix is Bo, who is this anxiety-ridden middle-aged man living in a grim apartment in what appears to be an almost post-apocalyptic cityscape. Outside in the world, there are naked, stabby killers, and um, he's in his apartment. He's got an air ticket to go and visit his mother, and this has cranked his anxiety levels up. He talks to his psychiatrist or his, his therapist who writes one word down in his, on his pad, which is guilt. <laughs> I just think the idea that a psychiatrist would actually write down the word guilt. It's like, you're a therapist. You're riddled with guilt. That's how it works. <laughs> Could you provide me with something decent? Yes. Um, and he attempts to leave his apartment, and there's a sort of crossover at the beginning. And then what happens is... He misses his plane due to car crash circumstances. He suddenly finds himself embarking upon this episodic odyssey, one of the sections of which is that he wakes up in the bed of people he's never met before, but who have accidentally run him down. Here's a clip. Am I dead? No, no. You've been healing so quickly. And no organs were hit. Your, your bleeding was really mild. What this is a room is. This is a room in our house, but it's your home for as long as you need. My name's Grace. Oh, this is Roger. This is my husband. Hey, Kai. Welcome back. Thought you'd sleep in, huh? Roger's a very respected surgeon. He's the one who dressed and treated your wounds. You're a lucky man. What was this? That's my little assistant health monitor. Keeps track of your condition. That I should say that's Nathan Lane who it comes is Nathan in. Nathan Lane, yes. Who is, I'm afraid, as soon as he came on, I was going, <laughs> Akuna, Matata. Because he's either Timon or Pumbaa, one of the two. Akuna. And that's just such a great moment. And he, he's great in it, but it kind of took me out. So then he's in this kind of dream home, but in every dream home, a heartache, because in fact, there's there's anguish and grief in the dream home that he suddenly finds himself on the wrong paint splattered end of. Then there is a weird section in which he disappears off into the woods, meets a sort of hippie woodland traveling theatre group who like to blur the boundaries between the performers and the artists in uh, unexpected ways. He continues this odyssey en route to his mother's house and we discover more and more about how this situation is getting worse and worse and worse and worse. I mean, I won't say any more in terms of what literally happens, although it, you couldn't really spoil the plot because it's not to do with plot revelation. The whole thing has um, a sort of nightmarish logic to it, particularly at the be at the beginning, but the, the, the logic of the whole film is nightmarish in the way of David Lynch's Eraserhead. It makes sense on a kind of paranoid, anxiety, stressy level. It obviously makes no absolute real sense. The whole thing is as Ari Aster was saying, it's very arch, it's very unreal. I mean, he was describing it at one point, I think Nathan Lane described it at one point as a, as a three-hour panic attack. And that's that's sort of the tone of it. Now, the question is whether or not the, the film is good, bad, or indescribable. <clears throat> I think the answer to it is this. We sat in the same room and watched it. And I think the opening is really taut and there's a very, very funny joke very early on in which he has to go out of his apartment and he leaves the building door open and 
there are catastrophic consequences. And it's really, it's funny. Like, it's laugh out loud funny. Some of the sections... And it each, was for you. It was for me, and I laughed. You didn't, and you, you were there with somebody. In fact, you didn't laugh at all during the whole film. I did laugh once. <clears> when was that? There was a portrait of a woman with... Oh, yes, with the big eyes, which like the, like the Tim Byrne thing. Okay, fine. So... Um, so, some sections of it work better than others. Uh, some sections, are, they, every section feels like it's in a different genre. So it's uh, it, it is a game of many halves and many parts, and some bits work better than other bits. Although the whole thing has a kind of uh, a, a momentum that feels a bit like, you know, Voltaire goes to hell via Darren Aronofsky's Mother, which again is a, another film which it reminded me of, which I remember you hated, p- p- absolutely hated. Um, I think that when it's at its best, it's got a kind of, you know, a a, a barreling psychological energy that reminds me of, of Punch Drunk Love and, as I said, Eraserhead. And I think at its worst, it reminds me of Charlie Kaufman's Synecdoche, New York. What I do think is if you don't find it funny, it will be insufferable. It will be like a toothache or a migraine. Mm-hmm. However, the, the, the penultimate section... I I thought just go ahead. Open your Kermode and Mayo branded bottle because I want I people realize, to hear. I didn't realize how noisy how it was. noisy it is. But just do because it's kept the, the water something. lovely and oh. cold, and I love the the dusted mm. uh, coating. Very good, nicely, nicely, nicely made, nicely done. Yeah, it's a solid item. It is. You can put down. Are you refreshed? I feel so much more refreshed. Like than carry I was. on. Sorry, carry okay. on. Okay, yeah. so in that sort of penultimate section, I. I laughed more than I've laughed in many a comedy film. And it was very interesting that as we were, as we finished the interview with, with Darren Aronoff, with um, uh, Ari Aster, and he said off, you know, off the recording, he said, did you find it funny? I said, I found it much funnier than I thought I was going to, because I did Which think... Which doesn't actually, it's very good. It's a very good answer. No, because I, I had not expected it to be as funny as it is. And I think that there is... It's not that funny, really. No, I think th- bits of it are hilariously funny. Like, And there are jokes in, the, in some sections that I've been laughing about ever since. It is unbelievably indulgent, deliberately so. It is like, it is, you. I think you asked Ari Aster at one point, who did he make the film for? And the answer is he made it for himself. Yes. Which is, oh, that's got to be a problem, hasn't it? That's got to be a red flag. It's certainly, uh, there's, it is certainly not for everyone. And at, th- and at <laughs> three hours, true. if you take, if you, if you don't find it funny, if, and I, and I, I'll say, I keep saying this, I did. There are things about it that are like slapstick, psychological, Freudian humour that I j- just tickled me. And I do think that whole thing that it's reducible to a shaggy dog story, the main gag of which is, what if your mother could hear all those things you tell your therapist, which I do find a funny idea. So on the one hand, it's long, ill-disciplined, unruly, sprawling, headachey, all those other things. On the other hand, it is peculiar, hilarious, slapstick, um, absurdist, you know, is it with nodding its head to matter of life and death one minute, and I think to airplane the next minute, because there are some sight gags in it that happen so fast you almost miss them. It is a game of many halves, and I think it is one of the few films in which it's not possible to say it's good or it's bad, and this is why I hate uh, that kind of that binary thing. There are things about it that I loved. There are things about it that I found insufferable. I think you found all of it insufferable. Pretty much, yes, pretty much. <laughs> but it's still possible to admire bits yeah. of it as it goes And through. I actually even like the bits that I find insufferable. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. While you're here, check out all the other videos because they're cool too, aren't they? Yeah, and if you want to keep up to date with everything Kermit and Mayo's take, then check out our social channels. I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, I I would. I have done. Excellent.